and welcome to the latest episode of the Celtic Review podcast brought to you in association with Eden Mill and as always just thanks to Eden Mill for the ongoing support of the Celtic View podcast. I'm delighted to be joined on this podcast by one of the greatest uh, goal scorers in recent years, one of only 29 men that have scored over 100 goals for Celtic of course I'm talking about John Hartson. John thanks very much for joining us here on the podcast. It's my pleasure, you're very welcome. Um, first of all, just just want to just uh, check how how you and the family doing dealing with this lockdown and and, and staying safe. I hope. Yeah, well, it's like everybody else, really. Um, you know, it's very difficult to go anywhere to do anything. Um, my wife goes to the to the shops every three or four days just to stock up on drinks and and food and and everything else. Um, and I've just literally with the kids in the house, out know, the back garden, really. We took the dog for a few walks and um, I'm hammering Netflix, all the movies on. <laughs> I'm normally just a sport guy. All I do is watch sports, really. But there's, you know, all you got at the minute is just like repeats and everything else. But um, no, we're coping all right, uh, Paul, you know, like like every other family across the, across the world, really. We're just trying to adhere to the you know, what the government have set out and um, just staying indoors, trying to stay safe and, um, you know, just looking at the NHS and the fantastic work that they're doing, the doctors and the nurses and, um, you know, it's it's really incredible, really, the amount of great things that are, that are happening during this terrible crisis that we're in, you know? Yeah, I mean, obviously one of the reasons we were wanting to sp- talk to you is it's your birthday this weekend, it's obviously the anniversary of winning that first title in the Gordon, where you scored the winning goal against Hearts. But do you think, you know, given what happened to you in the past in terms of your own health, that you're very appreciative and count your blessings when, when each of these kind of milestones come around in terms of birthdays? Well, of course, you know, I was only, um, um, it was 2009 where I, I was, I was, um, I was struck down with obviously testicular cancer that spread to my br- that spread to my lungs and onto my brain, and uh, I was incredibly uh, lucky and I'm very appreciative of the of the great work that the NHS did with me in in saving my life. Um, they went over and beyond and above really with um, with the treatment that I had. Put me in a private room in Swansea in the chemotherapy wards. Um, just so that I could have that bit of privacy. I, I didn't mind. I would have gone out with the other people, of course, to have my chemo with the other people that were going through the chemotherapy at the time. Um, but th- they went, you know, over and above, as I said. They put myself, looked after my family, and um, and eventually I got the right treatment, which which I'm still here today. So the NHS is, is very personal to me um, because I feel, you know, with their help and... Um, and everything else and their knowledge, you know, they, they saved my life. It's, it's pr- pretty much as simple as that. So um, when, whenever whenever these crises come around now, I, I do, you know, I, I, I feel to myself that I'm very blessed to still be here. And I have a wonderful family. I live in Edinburgh, a beautiful, um, beautiful home in the, the south of Edinburgh. And, um, you know, when you think what I grew up on a council estate, like a lot of people in Swansea, um, you know, you all you all sort of gang together. That seeds mentality as a family, and um, my family were there for me when when I was going through the cancer. We were all pulling together, and um, my parents, my my brother and two sisters, and uh, everybody else. Lots and lots of football fans, um, Celtic included, the Celtic family. So I feel incredibly blessed. I've, I've said it before about my feelings towards my. Um, my recovery through the testicular cancer that spread to my brain. Um, so, yeah, you know, the, these times are quite poignant, but as I said, everybody's going through it. And, um, you know, you have to feel for the families that are losing loved ones, but, uh, you know, we, we have to be strong as a nation and, you know, and everybody's doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, you, you've touched on the fact that, you know, part of that, that Celtic family, and I, I know speaking to you before, how much it means to you, just the way that Celtic fans think of you and, and think back at what you did for the club and the goals you scored and the memories that you gave us as, as fans, that must be nice for you even now every time you bump into fans and they're reminiscing with you. Well, yeah, you know, I think not not just, um, 
you know, Celtic fans were unbelievable, as you know, and I have a fantastic rapport with the supporters, you know, right from right from day one. The, I first arrived at the club and I had to split up that I, I'm, unbelievable partnership of, of Chris Sutton and Henrik Larsson, who'd done so well the season before I arrived in, in, the, in the treble winning season. Um, under Martin O'Neill. So ever, ever since I first arrived on the first day, my first goal, everything else, they have just been incredible to me. And, you know, the, the amount of mail and the, the messages, the goodwill messages I, I, I had from the Celtic family. And, you know, that it means an awful lot to me. And I think they know that. I think they know how much my, my, uh, my goals and everything means to me. Um, the fact that I, I failed the medical across the road uh, before arriving at Celtic, um, you know that was sort of um, that little bit of luck. Sometimes you need in life, where you know I had no allegiances at the time. I was, you know, I came up from Swansea and I was signed in for Glasgow Rangers, and then the medical fell through. And then six months down the line, Martin O'Neill uh, gets in touch and he says, "Look, John, I'd love to sign you for Celtic." and I breeze the medical and I end up playing over, you know, 220 odd games, whatever it was. Um, but no, my, my relationship with, with the supporters, I've, I've always been, uh, I've always had a fantastic relationship with them. I can always go back to the ground and have a, have a great welcome. They offer me back with the family sometimes and put me in the number seven lounge and look after my children and my wife and we all go as a family and enjoy the games. So, you know, that, that means an awful lot to me because I, I played for big clubs. I played for Arsenal. I, I played for 10 years in London before I arrived at Celtic at the age of um, 26. Um, but, you know, there's nothing that can prepare you for, you know, for what what type of club Celtic is. You know, the fan base, um, the numbers around the world, just incredible support. And uh, I've always said it that I can't go anywhere now these days whether... You know whether it's a family holiday to the states or Bermuda or a, 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 you know a caravan park in South Wales, w- without bumping into a Celtic fan. You know you're absolutely you're everywhere. <laughs> you're, you're all over the place, Bill. I can't move. But, uh, no, it's it's a great feeling, and, and I've mentioned it. I've touched on it many times before. Um, it's a very special club, Celtic, and they they welcome back their, you know their their former players. And I, I was very fortunate to have played in a in a magnificent group with a with a brilliant manager, and a really good time for the club. Uh, I remember yes. Lucky McNamara, my my old roommate, who's just been through, um, you know, just been through his own health sort of issues, and I'm glad to hear that Jackie's you know back fighting his way back to full health. Um, he always used to say to me, you know, John, I played here when when things weren't great, when they were losing to. Um, Inverness, Caledonian Thistle in the Scottish Cup and when when Rangers were, you know, were, were winning everything at that particular time and he says it wasn't a particularly great time, you know, we, we the crowds were down, everything else. He said, you're very fortunate, you're very blessed at this moment. He says, you're, you're here and it's a great time for the club. He says, we have a brilliant manager, a fantastic following. And uh, the players are just incredible. So I remember Jackie saying that to me, you've actually joined the club, John, at a brilliant time. So then five, five and a half seasons I spent at the club, you know, they, they were a very successful period that, that I was lucky enough to play for Celtic at that period of time. Yeah. I also, I also think from fans' point of view, you were obviously there, you scored the goals, we brought success, but I think fans can be very perceptive of, of how they see players and, and what they give the team. And that's why that's why I always think after you've stopped playing, why fans still love you. Because I, I think from the first, I think your first game at Rugby Park, I always remember the tackle you were flying and right at the corner flag. People knew you gave everything to that jersey. Well, I was lucky to stay on. I know, I know you well. <laughs> Martin O'Neill, not, not many people know this, but I got in the dressing room after the game and uh, Chris Sutton had put Henrik through to score the winner. I remember it very well. Chris played in midfield that day. When I came on, Chris dropped back into into a deeper role and he clipped a lovely ball through for Henrik and Henrik went on and got the winner. So we get in the dressing room after the game and Martin O'Neill saw everything is quiet and points a finger at me and says, John, I'm not having none of that. He said, uh, you, you're no good to me. Check, you know, with, I can't win with 10 men. He said, it's hard enough to win with 11 men. He said, yes, be physical. You know, I like your physicality, everything else. But we don't dive into tackles like that. And straight away, he brought me down as if to say, well, 
look, you know, we like we like you being physical. We like you being a target man. Put yourself about. But I don't have any of them silly tackles, them reckless tackles. And he was spot on. And I, I went on 224 games at Celtic. I was only sent off. I got sent off twice. But one of them was rescinded. Um, so I, I only got one sending off. In, all, in over 220 games, which, you know, that goes to show my, my discipline improved massively during the time I, w- I was working under Martin. Yeah, and obviously, obviously the, to go along with the appearances, those 110 goals, and, you know, to get off the mark the way you did with a hat-trick, I suppose for any striker, getting your first goals for a new club, but to get your first hat-trick as well, and then after that, you never really looked back. I never looked back after that. Um, as soon as I got in the team, I, I never really came out of the team. Um, I come off a few times. I, you know, I got I got dragged off a few times after about <laughs> 65, 70 minutes. But I normally got a couple of goals by then, so I was quite pleased with my afternoon's work, you know. Um, but listen, Paul, you, you and I know with the, the the unbelievable players, the Jimmy Johnsons and the, the Larsons and the Doug Leashes. I'm, I'm never going to go down as, as one of them, and rightly so. Because you know they were, they were just unique and they were just in, incredible, incredible football players that that added to a, a great, added to great teams that we've had. Because one player can't win a league title, you know. You need a team, you need a base. Um, and but I think what I will go down as is somebody that that, that was wholehearted, somebody who played with a bit of honesty. I wasn't always fit. Sometimes I was a little bit sort of, you know, heavy in my shorts and everything else. But one thing I did give, I gave my heart and soul to the football club. And, you know, I, I think everybody appreciates that. You're also in that, I mentioned right at the start, the, you know, the 29 players that have scored over 100 goals. That's that's still pretty a lost his company for any striker to keep. And, you, and you've mentioned three of the names that are part of that. Yeah, well, 100 goals for the club is, you know, makes me um, feel, you know, I, I played my part. I played my part in Celtic's history well, with a lot of other players, by the way. Um, you know, but to have joined that 100 club, you know, Lee Griffiths, I was delighted for Lee when he, he passed that um, 100 goal barrier a couple of months ago there. And I congratulated him. And um, I hope he goes on and gets another 100 because he's capable of doing that. He's got the age on his side. And, you know, you have to be at a certain age, and you have to be, you have to stay at a club for a certain amount of time to accumulate all these goals. And I think Lee, you know, in 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 the form that he's in, and the form that the team is in, creating chances for him, playing alongside Edward, he's he is one that can can go on and get another, you know, 80, 90, 200 goals for the club, um, because he, he's at that age, you know, in in his career, and 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 the team are at a great moment as well. Because I thought that was, you know, when he when he surpassed your total, I thought that was a really nice touch that you went on to, to social media and congratulated him. I thought I thought that was a really nice. I'm sure from his point of view to to hear you saying that about him. Well, I'm a big fan of Lee's, and you know, I offered to mentor Lee when he was going through his, you know, his, his off field um, issues and everything else, and you know, it's very personal to him. And uh, I, I would have been, I would have, because I've been through issues myself, you know, well documented with the gambling. I'm not on a bet now for nine years, um, but I'm in a great place, you know, mentally now and everything else. And I offered at that particular time to, to look after Lee, and I, I would have took him, and you know, we could have gone and watched <clears throat> a match during the week and everything else. But I think the club had their own sort of view on things and, and what they wanted to do and then they, they, they did it the way they wanted to do it with with um, with Griff. But as I said, I would have been there for him and I'm there for any players. I, I speak to Peter Lowell on a regular basis and, um, you know, somebody like myself now who's 45 on Sunday, I've been there, seen it, worn the T-shirts and I, and, you know, I, I like to give things back and um, if I can help any players... That, that are struggling in any shape or form, whether it's the football form or personal. I feel as if I'd been there. I've worn the T-shirt. So yeah. I think the club know that. The club know that I'm there if, if they ever need me, you know? Yeah, and again, that touches on why I think fans have, have a strong affection for you because, you know, you've, as you say, you're kinda, you still want to get involved, you still want to help, you still want to give back. And I, I think people appreciate that. Well, that's nice. It's nice to know that. But as I said, it comes from the heart. And um, I'm not somebody who, you know, who says things for the sake of it. I'll say things and I think it's, it's, it's coming from, from a deep sort of emotion. 
um, that when I say that. But as I said, I had conversations with with um, with Peter about that, and obviously um, they just decided it was their it was their prerogative to go which way they wanted to go. But uh, as I said, I think somebody who's been there, played at the highest level for a number of years. You know, you know I, I can act as a mentor for some of these young players. That, that's, that's, that's never a doubt for me, as well as looking after my own kids. <laughs> I've got to be a mentor yeah. for them as well. That's hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, chatting to you here, I mean, I can't not uh, go back to Anfield. Uh, you know, I was in the stand behind that goal when you hit that shot. Hartson, the one two with Larson. John Hartson lays up the shot! John Hartson with the goal, which surely takes Celtic to the UEFA Cup semi-finals. A wonderful strike. Celtic now, surely out of sight. You know, it's still, I can still close my eyes and see it. I'm sure you can as well. And that, that you know, you've said before you were a, a Liverpool fan growing up to score for us in that yes. stadium. That must have been great. It was. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing, if I'm being honest, because I had some great moments at Celtic in a Celtic shirt, in a Celtic dressing room, um, some wonderful victories as a group of men. Um, you know, the fans can remember some of the away victories that we had, um, some brilliant results on during that um, UEFA Cup uh, final, that, that run, the UEFA Cup run, where we reached the final, unfortunately, you know, got beat um, to Jose Mourinho's Porto. But the Liverpool goal, you know, I, when people say to me, what's your fit? I think that was maybe the one special moment you have. Everybody has one at a club. I think probably Chris Sutton's was either his goal after 17 seconds in his first Old Firm game or maybe the volley against Juventus. And I spend a lot of time with Chris and we reminisce about things. And, you know, I had many, many a great times, many, as I said, but you get one. And I, I think that one was, was obviously Liverpool away. Um, it put the game to bed. It, it gave us that lead, 2-0. Liverpool were never going to score two in the last six or seven. The way that we were defending as well that night, we were rock solid. Um, and it was a great moment for me, a great moment in, in, in my history. Um, I followed Liverpool all my life. One of the main reasons for that was because Ian Rush, the Welsh legend, um, goal scorer, 330-odd goals for Liverpool. He was my idol, my real icon for me growing up, uh, training with Rushy with the national team and Mark Hughes, Dean Saunders, Giggs, all these other great players that were around at that time. Um, so, so I scored that goal at Anfield against the team that I supported. My parents were with you behind the goal in that South end. Um, you know, that, that was the one moment that people generally stop me in the street and say, they all tell me where they were when that goal went in and how the pub erupted and people started to book, you know, their... Um, the semi-final tickets over to Boa Vista and everything else. So, yeah, it, it was... Um, I've spoken about it many times, Paul, but as I said, um, there were many, but that was the big one. That that was the one that I'll probably be remembered for in the Celtic shirt. Yeah, because in that, that season as well, of course, the goal in Celta Vigo was, was crucial. But I've said to you before, and I know you've kind of modestly downplayed it, I, I've always felt, whenever I look back in that season... If you had if you had been fit for that that final, I I, I still believe in my heart of hearts would have won it. Well, a lot of people have, have have nice and kindly said that. You know, it's just I really appreciate the kind words and and the support. But I can honestly say um, I was flying that year. I got my twenty fifth goal of the season um, in that beach ball Sunday game that we came back <laughs> that we beat Boa Vista. Um, away, we were in. We were in the UEFA Cup final. We come back, and we've still got a league campaign to concentrate on. And we went to Ibrox. I got brought down by Amoruso. Alan Thompson put the penalty in, scored the penalty. Tom o was brilliant. Scored a lot of goals against Rangers. Alan Thompson, really big, big player for Celtic. Big goal scorer, big game player. Um, and then I got the second goal, and we beat Rangers at Ibrox that day, two one. And in about the 70th minute, my back went. 
and there was still about, I don't know, 10, 9, 10 games to go of that season, plus the UEFA Cup final. Um, and I knew I wouldn't play. As soon as I come off that day, my back had gone. And it wasn't an ankle or a knee or a, you know, a thigh or anything. It was my back. And, and when your back goes, that's it. Everything goes through your back, all your muscles. I burst a disc. And I knew in my heart of hearts, that was it. My season was done. And the reason why I'm saying this, the 25 goals, is because I know we lost the league that year. We, we were trophyless that year. But I don't think the Celtic fans would swap anything other than the trip to Seville and the UEFA Cup final. All right, we concentrated on that. We never won a trophy. We just narrowly missed out to Rangers by a goal. And in my mind, just as importantly as the UEFA Cup final, I definitely would have added to my tally of 25 goals that year during them that last eight or nine league games that we had. I would have added it to my goals. There's no doubt about that. The way I was playing, the way the team were playing, it was very nip and tuck, the league title that year. Um, so that is as disappointing as much to me as missing the final because we missed out on the league by one goal. So um, that, that, as I said, was as much as a frustration to me, not having added to my tally and helped us win the league, but also it was a double blow because I ended up missing the final as well. Yeah, and as, you, as you say, strangely, it's, it's you know I don't think a Celtic fan would swap that season for, for anything, um, even though we didn't we didn't ultimately win anything. Well, I just think the joy that you know it brought to you know the Celtic fans, um, the stories, the the trip to Seville, you know, a European final, um, people taking time off work and school teachers having the week off and lads who work on the building site and just general, genuine Celtic fans who just didn't want to miss it, would have saved up, would have done anything, would have gone into debt, would have got loans. They had to be in Seville. They had to witness this European final. And I suppose if you ask, you know, 99.9% .9 of the Celtic support, you know, they wouldn't have swapped that trip for the world other than the fact that, listen, we would have loved to have won. Of course we would have um, we did yeah. everything to try and win the game but other than that I don't think they'd, they'd have even swapped you know, a couple of trophies that year and not gone to the UEFA Cup final in Seville so for me you know, it, it was difficult to take because I'd missed, you know, I'd missed quite a part of that having played in all the other games um, but there we go it might have been the case of I didn't like playing in the heat anyway uh, because of my colouring I used to go all blotchy and red faced and um, I hated playing in the sun and as you can remember it was a boiling hot night so who's to say I would have made a difference you know it's 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 faith and um, it's just one of those things yeah in terms of, of European so again I was just checking before before calling you and you're one of only three Celtic players to have scored in the new camp as well, which again, and, and also to get as a positive result, which, you know, that standard that we were playing at that time was very impressive. Yeah, I remember that goal. It was, um, I, got, I got a few goals ruled out for being onside and they were called offside. So, you know, the gods were on my side that night at the at the burn at the um, at the new camp because it was a case of I might have been a yard offside, but I the goal got given. So they say, you know, it evens itself out. But um no, it was a one one that night. It was quite funny because my dad was there that night and he was in the crowd and uh and he was taking pictures of the scoreboard. <laughs> he, he took pictures of the scoreboard, and it was Eto one Barcelona, and it was Hearts and one Celtic. And he, he was in the cafe back in Swansea the next morning doing his day-to-day -day thing. My dad just getting on with his work, what he does, and he was showing the lads a picture on his phone. You know, he was at, he took the picture, and the lads, you know, having breakfast. Oh my God, you were in Barcelona last night, and you're back in the cafe this morning, but. That's the way my life is and my family's life is. We are a very humble family and, uh, you know, they appreciate. And, um, you know, one of the things I feel very proud of is is making my family proud, you know, making my mum and dad proud. They have, they, you know, they're proud of what their son achieved. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I said right at the very start that it's uh, your birthday this, this weekend and you celebrated in 2006 with a, a title one and goal, which... It's not it's not a bad way to celebrate your birthday. And the 
this partner that Gareth Jankowskis has improved his record very much in recent times. Yes, Hartson! He scored right at the start! Celtic have the lead! That's what that man gives you. Opportunist, the ball fell, one thing on his mind. I must say, Craig Gordon was a little bit lost. That's Hartson knowing that. Ball bounces, bang, a little bit out of his angle there. Great Gordon, but a great finish. No nasty bounce, but this is a player feeding off another player, knows what's happening. First time shot, right in front of the goalkeeper. Craig Gordon, absolutely no chance. No, well, again, I, I, you know, myself and Magic Zorabski that season played a lot together and um, we ended up winning the title. I think it was Gordon Strachan's um, first year in charge at Celtic. So it was nice for Gordon to have won the league in his, in his first uh, year at Celtic as manager um, when he replaced, obviously, the great Martin O'Neill. Um, I previously worked with Gordon as well at, um, at Coventry. And he played a major role in me actually coming to Celtic. He told me to come to Celtic when there was other clubs um, that wanted to sign me that year when I arrived in 2001. Um, you know, so it was nice to do that as well for Gordon, who, who always backed me. Um, I know he sold me uh, with a year left on my contract, but that was his prerogative. That was his, he wanted to play a different route, go a different way, um, tactically, everything else. That that that's for him to decide. That he was the manager of the football club. He, he you know, he makes the calls, the decisions. Um, but I have to say, Gordon was excellent with me at Coventry and also at Celtic, and so that was a great way, you know, to to reward Gordon as well for his first year. And um, and as you say, it's it's my birthday coming up. It's it's nice to do it. You look back and think, well, you know. But I'm very much. I want to you know say as well about the team. You know, the team were excellent and, um, you know, there's no way I would have got off my goals. You look at Henrik, he got 200, you know, whatever goals, 240-something goals. You know, he, he would Henrik would be the first one very humble to thank his teammates, to thank Chris Sutton, myself, for laying goals on the plate for him and, and, and crosses coming in and defences allowing him to go, you know, Celtic defence allowing him to go and score goals, you know, for Celtic. Um, and I'm the same, you know, I wouldn't get them goals without the service. Yeah. So, um, you know, the likes of Lambert and Petrov and these guys sliding me through with the perfect weight and everything else. So, yeah, but um, no, the, the the league win, as I said, was, was very special. I didn't know it was going to be my last year. It turned out to be my last year at the club as well, my last season. So there we are. It was a good time. Yeah. Um, just finally, John, just obviously bringing it right up to date. You obviously know Neil going back many years as a friend and a, a teammate. And mm -hmm. How pleased have you been since he's he's come back into the club in difficult circumstances last year, but really steadied it. And this year's kind of taken the team on, certainly in terms of the the goal level we've scored and yeah. you know the lead we've established in the league. I think he's done extremely well. I really do. Um, I'm I'm a he's a good friend of mine, Neil. Very 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 personal good friend. We spent time on holiday together with our families and we, we know each other extremely well um, a lot of respect there for each other and uh, you know when he got the job on the back of the Scottish Cup final win against Hearts um, it was a big call from the club not everybody was uh, in favour you know it was pretty much um, lots wanted Neil lots said that we, we did that we two minutes I'll be out in one minute not, a lot of people were saying, well, we love Neil, but we're not quite sure whether we want him back as manager. Um, but the club were brave. Peter Lowell was brave. They gave him the job. And he's not looked back. I think they changed a little bit of the staff. They brought one or two staff in. Uh, John Kennedy is now working alongside him very closely. They rate John at Celtic very highly. And it's turned out to be a fantastic call. And the fans have been great. The fans have got behind him. They love Neil Lennon. He's one of their own um, Celtic fan. Um, and besides that, tactically, he's a, he's a very, very good manager, and I'm delighted that he's got himself in a position to uh, to try and get this, you know, this this fourth, um, you know, the maybe four, the quadruple, triple, triple treble, quadruple treble. Um, he's got an opportunity to do that. It's just when 
when we can get this season back rolling now underway. But I can't praise him highly enough the way he's come in. And I've always said it. I think the fact when he left the club, I think he's come back a better manager. I really do. I think he genuinely really appreciates being back at Celtic. Um, he's very inexperienced, no job at all. Only the fact that he did a bit of coaching under uh, Tony Mowbray and um, and Gordon Strachan, uh, and before he took the job, so he got bags of experience. Now I read the other week he's just gone past ten years as manager of Celtic, That's which really is nice. a, a great milestone for him. And as I said, um, he's in a he's put he's put the team in a brilliant position now to go on and have another successful season. I just hope we get we can play these games out. Uh, we want to try and win the league fair and square. Uh, we've got to a great position, 13 points clear with the gate with the with Rangers having one game in hand. I think we'd have to lose five out of the last eight, you know, to lose this title. So it w- it would be a travesty if if we weren't to go and clinch nine in a row. I really hope we can get the games going and the league can get you know. This uh, horrible coronavirus obviously takes priority, but um, I just hope when it all clears up and we, we can get going again, uh, the team go on and have another successful year. And a lot of that would be down to Neil and, and his and his signings and, and his staff. And of course, Neil will, will be first one to thank all his players and appreciate what the players are doing. But a lot of it will be down to Lenny, no doubt, no doubt that in my mind. Absolutely. Well, listen, John. I I, uh, I realised you're you're uh, being called back to homeschooling now in the in the house. I know. <laughs> I'm a little bit. Say hello, Paige. Go on. Say hello. Go on. No, she's shy. She's got fingers. <laughs> she's gonna think. Are you gonna say it? No. Right. Okay. Come okay. well, on. Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, listen, listen, John. We'll, we'll let you go, but um, have a have a brilliant birthday when it comes. Um, you and, and uh. For you and all your family, please please stay safe and then hopefully we'll see you back at Celtic Park before too long. Well, thank you, Paul. God bless, mate. All the best.